so let's do this problem now so first we need to visualize the problem so let's visualize so this is the ceiling so from this ceiling two identical charge spheres are suspended so let's suspend the two identical charged spheres so they have equal lengths the strings and this is the sphere identical spheres of equal charges so let the charges be q and q uh, two identical spheres are suspended okay equal lengths and make an angle of 30 degrees with each other so this angle is 30 degrees so by symmetry if you draw a vertical line each of the spheres will make an angle of 15 degrees with the vertical agreed <coughs> okay now first since these two spheres are in equilibrium the net force on them has to be zero because then only the acceleration will be zero so let's draw the free body diagram of the sphere this is in air then later on we'll do the same thing in liquid that's the advantage of doing on the computer I need not draw it all over again so this is the situation in liquid the question says that in the liquid also the angle is the same okay but now the free body diagram would vary depending on air or whether it is liquid so in air the free body diagram for the each sphere would be <coughs> the weight is the force which will act vertically downwards so let me call it mg then tension would act along the string and it's a pulling force so it pulls the sphere away from it so that is tension T then the electric force of repulsion between the two identical charges let me put that in green so let me call it Fe electric force now in the second case when it is suspended in liquid let us draw the free body diagram for that case so the electric force would act but now it would be a different different value because the liquid will act as a dielectric and it will change the permittivity okay so it will be permittivity will be epsilon not free space epsilon not so the electric force would vary it would be different so let's call this new force as Fe so again the force direction would be same only electric force direction so, but now we will call it Fe prime ok then different value tension would again still be in the same direction but the value of tension would be different no will it be different why will it be different if the angle is same the tension has to be same yeah so we will call it T itself you agree right tension will be same ok and weight would also be same right weight of the object gravitational force with which earth pulls it down would not vary right it would be mg but now you have a buoyant force which is a vertically upward force due to the weight of the liquid displaced so buoyant force B will act now
right? Okay. So let me call that B. So these are the only forces. Is there anything else? No, right? So in both cases, net force should be zero along horizontal and vertical. So let's resolve the forces along horizontal and vertical. So let me draw the axis. This is the vertical axis. This is the horizontal axis. This is the horizontal axis. This is the vertical axis. Clear? Is it clear? So let me label it X, Y. X, Y. So this angle would be 15 degrees. So the component of tension along the vertical direction would be what? It's an adjacent T cos 15. Be loud, otherwise it, your voice won't be audible. So T cos 15 degrees, and the component of tension along the horizontal would be T T sine. Be loud. T sine 15 degrees. So since I have drawn the components in the free body diagram. I should remember to cancel out the original force. Clear? Okay. Now similarly, I'll resolve here also. T sine 15 degrees. And here T cos 15 degrees. right here also i'll cancel out the original tension force so now the equations what do i get i get mg equals t cos 15 degrees and electric force would be 1 by 4 pi epsilon naught oops 1 by 4 pi epsilon naught into q squared by now did they give the length of the string any value okay so let the separation between the two charges be r okay let the separation be r so here also it is R. So 1 by 4 pi epsilon naught Q squared by R squared. That is the electric force. That should be equal to T sine 15 degrees. Agreed? And in this case, in this side, in liquid you will get the new electric force is 1 by 4 pi epsilon. Epsilon is dielectric constant times epsilon naught. Right? So I am calling it K, dielectric constant. So 1 by 4 pi K epsilon naught should be equal to, no, the into Q squared by R squared should be equal to T sine 15 degrees. Right? And along the vertical. Okay, I think the T will not be same in both cases. It won't be same. No, MG will be same. See here you will get, here you will get from this equation, you get T should be equal to MG by cos 15 degrees. Agreed? 
whereas in this from this equation you will get so let's call it t prime you won't get the same thing along vertical you will get the equation b plus t sin uh, t cos 15 b plus t cos 15 degrees is equal to mg which gives you t would be equal to mg minus b divided by cos 15 degrees agreed or not so that's why this tension and that tension are not going to be equal so this will be t prime okay so we should know the value of buoyant force also if you have to fully solve for it okay now let's see what else we can do so now now we'll divide equation 1 and 2 So now let's uh, divide equation one by equation uh, equation two by equation one. So we get one by four pi epsilon naught r squared into q squared. Mm -hmm. It's getting divided by mg, and that is equal to. Now T and T will cancel out. Sine 15 by cos 15 is tan 15 degrees. Similarly, here we have this would give us B minus mg is equal to T cos 15 degrees. Okay, we'll call this T prime. T prime cos 15 degrees. So we'll call this equation 4 and we'll call this equation 3. So if you divide equation 3 by equation 4, you will get 1 by 4 pi epsilon naught into k into r squared and here in the numerator you will have q squared is equal to t prime will cancel out tan 15 degrees. So let's call this equation 5. Yes? Yeah, in the numerator you will have. No, in the denominator. Yeah, in the denominator you will have B minus mg. Yeah. So now if you compare the right hand side of equation 5 and 6, you can equate the left hand sides. So you equate you uh, comparing five and six. We get one by four pi epsilon naught r squared mg. The numerator q squared is equal to one by four pi epsilon naught k r squared into b minus mg in the numerator q squared agreed so q squared will cancel out r squared will cancel out one uh, four pi epsilon naught will cancel out so you end up getting k uh, so b minus mg so k times b minus mg is equal to mg so you get dielectric constant k is equal to 2 mg minus b sorry mg by b minus mg mg by 
b minus m g. Right? Okay. So once so now that we know that dielectric constant k is going to be m g by m g minus b. Okay. So you must be wondering how suddenly it became m g minus b. Earlier I had written b minus m g. Well, uh, what happened was here I had made a silly mistake. It was m g minus b here. Then in this step I had by mistake written it as b minus m g and carried that mistake everywhere. So after pausing the video, I have made the corrections. So now we are on the right track. Okay. So dielectric constant is m g by m g minus b. So now we don't know the mass, we don't know buoyant force. but we know the densities of the solid and the liquid so mass we will write in terms of the density of the solid okay so mass is density into volume so density of solid if i ca call it rho s then mass of the solid would be rho s into v and density of solid is 1600 kg per meter cube so m can be replaced with 1600 v similarly buoyant force is supposed to be the weight of displaced fluid So weight of displaced fluid is the uh, weight of the fluid which occupies the volume occupied volume of the solid. So V into density of liquid, if I call it rho L into G, would give me the buoyant force. So density of liquid is given as 800 kg per meter cube. So it becomes 800 V into G. So now I substitute that here. I get 1600 V G divided by 1600 V G minus 800 V G. So V G will cancel out, so it becomes two. So the answer is dielectric constant of the liquid is two. 